<laughs> had the mic off there for a second. Sorry, folks. Hey, guys, welcome to another edition of the Night Sky This Week. I'm Andrew Fazekas, your host for May the 6th, 2024. Another edition, another week of stargazing. I hope you're doing well. Hope you had some nice stargazing to do this past weekend. I'd love to hear where you're watching from, what kind of skies you've experienced this past week. It'd be great to hear. Um, and it's beautiful here in Montreal. I've got, I'm looking out the window and it's just beautiful. I'm expecting to do some nice stargazing tonight, maybe posting some photos as well. Uh, love working with my uh, scope here from Veonis, my friends at Veonis supporting uh, my live streams. Thank you very much, Veonis. Uh, this is a great Vespera scope and I'll be showing you some of the amazing things that we can see in the night sky thanks to this beautiful equipment over here. Love to see folks there. Hi, Linda from London, England. So nice of you to join. Welcome for, to another edition. And let's dive right into the planetarium software from my friends at Sky Safari. Here we go. Hey, uh, if you find value in this video, guys, please do put do those good things with social media. Give me a thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel, whether it's on YouTube or Facebook. I'd love to see you uh, and it means a whole lot to me in being able to provide these streams to you every week for free uh, with your support so uh, so much appreciated thanks um, here we are this is the sky set up for us on Monday May 6 this is what we're looking for Jupiter they're pinning down the southwestern skies I'm telling you it's a challenge now to see Jupiter because it's so close in to the sun embedded in that glow of the sunset and it follows the sun very very quickly so uh, I would say it is a quite a challenge to see Jupiter but if we go up above uh, Jupiter you'll see some interesting things uh, an hour say after sunset you can still see some of the leftover constellations of the earlier spring late winter of course, Gemini right there with Castor and Pollux. Again, what are we? We're talking about early evening here. Say around eight, nine o'clock, you get to start seeing them pop out these stars that represent the Gemini twins. Um, and then this week, of course, if you look at the grand scheme, it seems it, we don't have a moon in the evening skies for most of the week. Uh, this week, so this is a great time to do what we call deep sky observing. So take your chances this week if you've got clear skies. Get outside and learn some things about the deep sky. Uh, night sky. This is really when we're talking about deep sky stuff, we're talking about things beyond the solar system. So star clusters, nebula, galaxies, and this time of the year, particularly galaxies are one of the top objects to see with binoculars and telescopes. And that's because we're looking, if you look at generally um, the southern skies in the early evening or late evening, well, we're centered on two constellations, Virgo and Leo, as you can see here uh, that I've got set up here. So this is a window out of our own galaxy, guys. This is really exciting because, you know, usually we have all these stars that are in the way and uh, blocking our view of the entire universe. Now, 
These stars are part of our own Milky Way, our home galaxy, but we want to see further than that out of our galaxy. It can be tough because of all those stars blocking our view. So this time of the year, we kind of have this natural window out of our galaxies in this part of the sky that's occupied by Virgo and Leo. And so when we look at this part of the sky, there are a lot of um, deep sky objects. Now I'm going to show you if I'm just going to get this an hour later. Uh, there we go. We'll get to see some of these galaxies. Look at this. Each little oval that you see uh, drawn out and marked with a M designation, Messier designation, is, uh, is a galaxy. So you can see there's lots of it. And these are all within the realm of binoculars and small backyard telescopes. So Virgo the Maiden and Leo the Lion, the best hunting ground you could have this time of the year for galaxies. So we're talking about here a trio of galaxies, uh, uh, pinning down M95, M96, M105, pinning down the belly of Leo the lion, the back legs of the lion, another set of galaxies, M66 and M65, just beautiful galaxies. Look at M65. It's 42 million light years away, and it's kind of an edge on spiral, or a, a spiral galaxy that's kind of at a diagonal uh, position. So you get to see some of those arms wisping out from the central core of this galaxy, 42 million light years away. It's, it just boggles the mind just thinking that we're seeing something so far away, 42 million light years away. Um, and it was uh, discovered uh, by Charles Messier in 1780, a very faint nebula without stars is how it he described it and so it's uh you need a, a gal maybe a um uh binoculars that has 10 times power to be able to see this you can see it's part of a trio look at that so imagine being able to see all three of these galaxies in one field of view through a telescope it's really amazing look an edge on all three spiral galaxies look at this completely edge on spiral with a dark dust lane cutting right through the central bulge of this galaxy. It's absolutely beautiful to think each one of these is, are islands of millions, if not billions of stars uh, out there. Michelle says it's too bad it's t hazy tonight. Uh, well, hopefully you'll have the rest of this week. You'll have at least one, week, one day out of the week where you can have clear skies. You, it's, this is actually visible for the coming month or two or three months, actually, this, uh, this view that you're seeing here through a telescope. So don't worry if it's cloudy tonight. You'll, you'll probably get other chances to see this uh, over the course of the coming weeks and months. Then if we move over to Virgo, look at this. It's uh, like a whole smorgasbord of galaxies. It's amazing how many there are. Uh, again, many of these look like what we term in amateur astronomy circles, faint fuzzies. So these are really what look like little cotton balls through the view of binoculars and telescopes. Again, a 10 times pair of binoculars is what you need, at least dark skies, no moon this week in the uh, late evening sky. So it's perfect time to hunt for all of these uh, strange, mysterious, distant islands of stars. There's M60. And I'm just going to go through some of these are giant. This one is a giant elliptical galaxy, 56 million light years away. M59 next to it, M58. Look at this, M58, another beautiful spiral galaxy, 65 million light years away in the constellation Virgo. Look at those beautiful tight spiral arms. Just imagine millions of stars embedded in all across these beautiful arms that are just hugging that central core, the downtown core of this galaxy. So far away from us, 65 million light years away, about the time of when the uh, dinosaurs here um, met their demise, thanks to that giant asteroid, 65 million years ago, approximately, think about that, that's how long the light takes to come from this galaxy, M58, 
and you can see it with a strong pair of binoculars, a small telescope. It's incredible how ancient that light is. And there, you know, and it just goes on and on. I mean, you can have here the Coma Pinwheel Galaxy. This one over here, M99. Look at how beautiful this one is. 42 light years away. Look at the beauty. This is, again, a photograph taken through a backyard telescope showing us the true beauty of these spiral arms that come out from, these, uh, from this galaxy. It's just amazing to think how many. And you can see from the map, I mean, there's lots. And if I zoom out, I, I'll show you where these are. These are in the southern um, sky uh, around. This is centered around just after 10 o'clock. And uh, it's right above the head of, of Virgo the Maiden. And you can see Arcturus, the bright orange star, just off to the left of this group of galaxies. Here's another one, a black eye galaxy, very famous galaxy as well. It's also known as Messier 64. Only 14 million light years away, relatively close compared to these other galaxies that we're talking about. Look at how beautiful that looks like a black eye through a small telescope. It's this orangey yellow uh, central region with a very dark dust lane un just underneath it. And then surrounding it is this very ghost like kind of shroud of um, of stars that are forming these very wispy like um spiral arms it's really beautiful only 14 million light years and i'm saying only because of all these uh, other much larger distances so this is actually really fun to see this week i highly recommend it i'll put some sky charts about these so that you can kind of do your own hunting of these um on your own time but uh again springtime in the northern hemisphere uh fall in the southern hemisphere great time for galaxy hunting right now and of course um all, what i wanted to also show is a little bit about the moon before i close up today's um show and let me just go with the day and i'm gonna show a little bit let me go earlier in the evening right like that we're gonna put it towards the west and now we're gonna head towards um Tuesday, Wednesday, and look on Wednesday. You see the moon just pop up there, just above Jupiter? That's Wednesday. By Thursday, the moon is a little bit higher. By Friday, even higher than that. And you can see it's kind of in between two stars, Procyon and Capella, two bright stars kind of sandwiching the moon. Again, this is, on f this is Friday night, Friday night, May 10th. And there's May 11th. I'm going to, by Saturday, I'm just going to go in a little bit later so you, uh, at night. Let's change the hours to like 9, 10 o'clock. There we go around 10 o'clock. Zoom in and you can see the moon by Saturday night, late night. It's a beautiful thin crescent moon. And it's just underneath the pair of stars called Pollux and Castor forming this uh, beautiful triangular formation. Again, this is Saturday night. May 11th. Just gorgeous looking towards the western sky. If we now switch to Sunday, look at this. It forms this jagged line, almost a perfect line with Pollux and Castor still in Gemini. But look at the moon uh, with that pair of stars. It's going to be very eye-catching. Again, this is Sunday night, May the 12th. How cool is that? Looking in the south or western, the western sky. And just above that will be uh, the beehive cluster in Cancer, the crab, which is just above Gemini. It makes it a really neat uh, opportunity to find a star cluster. The moon is going to be very thin crescent, so it shouldn't interfere the light from the moon, the glare from it, in, in being able to see uh, the beehive cluster. Very beautiful. Again, this is a cluster of stars within our Milky Way, just over 600 light years away. This is what it looks like through binoculars and through a telescope, a beautiful sight. Again, Sunday night, the moon is going to be not far away from this cluster, but and it shouldn't interfere, but makes a good guidepost and finding the beehive cluster with the moon, Pollux, and Castor, the Gemini twins just near it. Just absolutely gorgeous. Hey, Cynthia, nice of you to join. We've got Joe also joining us from Sydney, Australia. 
um, v uh, we've got Gudrun from uh, Sweden. Um, we've got Rafiki from Botswana, wonderful to hear, all on Facebook. Wonderful to see you. see you. Tabby is also here. Fantastic. Hey guys, thanks for joining. Uh, love to see you guys uh, on our my, uh, my uh, Facebook and YouTube feed. I'd love to see your comments as well. If you're interested in finding out more information about astronomy, I invite you to check out my book, The Backyard Guide to the Night Sky. I go through a lot of really cool things um, that uh, are great for beginners and for also for those of you who have telescopes and binoculars, it's just a great way to do the hobby. It's available at all bookstores, also through my website, signed edition copies. All, all proceeds help support me on my live stream. Thanks so much for joining me this week. I hope to see you next week. Until then, clear skies.